All right, within these overall topics that we're setting on a weekly basis for you guys, I think it's really important that the flow of them kind of really flows and basically one topic really goes into the next topic and you can connect the dots between them. I'm really, really big on being able to connect the dots with things. So topic number two that we're gonna uh, discuss today is having a plan in place and why that's so important in relation to the goals that you have. <clears throat> I will start this because I will. I can say 100 million percent, and you know this because my history, but the reason that I am not a pro yet is 100% because I never had a plan in place in the off season, and that's and that and that doesn't even mean just X's and O's. I think um, that's that's part of it. A lot of people will have this this goal that they want to achieve, and then and then they're like, well, okay, well, God, now what do I do? X's and O's wise, but that just means like, how are you gonna go about your day to get everything that you're supposed to do in? For one, um, so you need to have a plan for that. And if you don't know what to do X's and O's wise, then you need to, you know, have somebody guide you to get you there. And sometimes that plan in place, like you know, I've been sick for the last couple of weeks, and Matt and I, I let Matt take over uh, for me. And sometimes you got to go backwards to go forwards. So you know, we we don't have, you know, what I'm doing right now is not what I'm going to be doing in a couple months. We're sure. going to build me back up. He gave me amounts of food that. I can actually eat right now. Um, you know, he's not just throwing. Uh, I think a lot of people start aiming too high, and you know, I think you need to start off with something that's actually feasible for you to do first, and then build upon it from there. So don't be afraid to start small and work your way and progress through things, whether that's diet, training, um, or whatever. So um, to pull it away from just diet structure, because that's an easy place for us to get lost for off-season structure and planning. Look at training, because that's closer to my heart. When we're going through an off-season and trying to plan for things and having a structure, it's way too easy to look at the diet too much and start over-obsessing about hitting that target and then letting the training fall where it may. 100%. So just because we have more food going in and we're in a, a surplus as after coming out of a diet phase, it's really easy to fall into the expectation that as soon as the calories go in, well, it's open season. We can do whatever we want, and it's just going to go. And then we don't have the foresight usually when we're in that stage in the last periods of a diet to think that runway is going to get real short at some point. We're going to feel like we can run forever to start with, and then as soon as you get used to being in a surplus and things normalize, it's not the same anymore. And then once you hit to that point, if you didn't have a structure, you didn't have a plan, you didn't have a real solidified training plan in place already, looking at what progressions you can tangibly make, where you want to take it to, where your weak points are, what you can actually lean into for whatever part of your development you are. If you don't have those things in place already, you're just going to be walking into the gym not knowing what's going to happen. And if you already feel like you're going to be performing at your best, but you don't have a structure, you're just throwing things at the wall hoping it's going to work. And you add every single training day over periods of months in your off season of you just throwing things at the wall hoping it's going to work you're gonna end up not where you wanted to be anyway, even if you hit all the other boxes perfectly. Something just really quick, based off of both of y'all's points that I think is so important, I wanna do a video about this specifically, but with my Instagram uh, question and answers, I get so many questions about everybody turning basically bodybuilding into an equation. Um, whether it's on the diet aspect with percentages of macronutrients, whether it's on the training aspect with percentages, and, and basically, I always try to suggest them that they throw that out because it doesn't really, like, for example, you've I been sick. At all. And, like, if, if I took, you know, some equation of where you technically should be at, it wouldn't meet your needs of where you're really at. Yeah. And then the same thing, like you just said, transitioning from one phase to the next, percentages are useless. I mean, they really are until you standardize the basis of where your performance is at and then the rate of which it's going to increase, you know, basically from a deficit to a surplus. So... Um, within those two things, I think it's so, so important just to like, you, whether you guys are a coach, whether you guys are needing coaching, whether you're coaching yourself, it's all about meeting yourself where you're at to yeah. formulate the best plan in that moment in time. Okay. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't a math equation. Yeah. I think, I think to go off of what you said between the X's and O's and between the training, what you said, what I see a lot of as a female in this sport is girls hitting their X's and O's after stage being, you know, they're nailing their reverse diet and they're doing their cardio, but is their reverse diet getting them to where they need to be to meet the bigger picture of their goals within their training? Are they progressing in the gym? Have they, you know, been able to gain any significant kind of progress or get on any kind of role in the gym 
by you know increasing their food enough to make those changes to make those progressions by you know stepping away from the the shreds this is something i've talked about a lot on my instagram and getting away from attaining just a physique goal to be able to, to attain strength goals to cross off the right x's and o's within your diet within your training to have the right plan because you could be following your plan perfectly but at the end of the day is that plan you're executing, you know, the diet you're adhering to, the training, the cardio that you are outputting and executing on a daily basis, is that getting you to that bigger goal? Is that allowing you to progress where you need to? Or is that, is following that plan, which you could be doing perfectly, is that keeping you the same? Is it keeping you stagnant? Is it keeping you from getting better, from getting stronger, from um, getting to a place of hormone homeostasis where your body is able to function um, naturally as best as it can to be able to just have energy throughout the day to not be so food focused all the time because within following those X's and O's, it might not still be the right X's and O's for you to follow. Mm -hmm. I want to add on something that you made me think of. Do you get this question a lot? Like <clears throat> when you send your diets, are people like, well, what are my macros? Because yeah. we don't, we don't yeah. use it. Yeah, right. You know, we just type up the food. Like in your mind though, you have an idea what they're at. For but sure. People ask me all the time, well, how do you know how much food? I don't, I don't know. I just know. Yeah. Like I'm not, we're not sitting there using a calculation, like you said, right. to come up with calories and macros and blah, blah, blah. Like after a while, when you do this for so long, you can look at somebody, what they've been doing to see where they're currently at. And we just know, we just kind of know what, what to put direction on. they need to go. Yeah. I just yeah. kind of, I just know, and I'll have an idea what the calories are at and protein and macros and stuff. But people, I had a guy the other day and sometimes if somebody, it depends on the client too, if somebody wants their macros, like if I'm comfortable with them making exchanges, I'll make a spreadsheet and they'll, they can make substitutions. But like I had a guy, he's like, I think the, uh, I calculated it was off like 15 grams of fat, you know, should we change anything? And I'm like, no, the food's right. Like, right. don't worry, I'm not obsessed. The numbers are whatever they are, as long as you eat the same thing every day. Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing, like the cooked versus uncooked. I don't know, pick one right. and just do the same thing and then measure what's going on. Right. But I always thought that was interesting. People think that we're, um, we have these special formulas to come up with this, concoct this perfect plan for somebody right off the bat. When in reality, we, I'd say nine out of 10 times, we're probably spot on. Sure, but the plan is all based off of their response. Yeah. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, you gotta come up with something. And you know, if, if, if I do figure out the macros, most of the time it does come out to like a 40 40 20 but it's just what it's just happens. experience from doing it. yeah we just know yeah so. if you shoot too high you shoot too low you change it like based on their feedback and what yeah. they say and how they respond like no yeah there's tell. no it's perfect adjusted. there's no perfect formula so people yeah. people just get you know paralysis by analysis sometimes and they and then they just never get anything done yeah that's a huge thing that we're going to touch on probably every video at some point is that trying to pull with our round tables to pull away the mysticism and exoticism out of bodybuilding in general and every topic that we can go into. Because we have everybody that's, I mean, people that have literally the heaviest thing they've ever lifted is a clipboard and a pen <laughs> that think that they know everything about this. And you can make, just because there is complexity to the human body and all the systems that we're playing with to make this happen, doesn't mean it needs to be a complicated approach. Yeah. It doesn't mean that everything needs to be tracked out, put on a spreadsheet by percentages and tracked out in that sort of way. If you know what's going to happen, there's a difference between knowing the science and knowing the application of it yeah. and how to achieve the goal, knowing that all of those things are in place, whether or not you're looking at them specifically as factors. You don't have to if they're all in place by practice and the practicality of doing the application over and over again, like you and you and you doing things for years, decades. Yeah. You're going to know all the stuff. You don't need to know exactly why all the time as long as you know what toggle switches to play with. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll lead you always to the place that you need to be if you're looking and being intuitive with the information you're getting back from the feedback of the person. Yeah, sure. So. And with that being said, I do still understand. It we don't it's not complicated to us but i still understand when i get somebody that's new it is complicated to them right so i totally get that i'm not saying you know by i'm just saying that you know people are like this doesn't have to be complicated mm -hmm. well to us it's not yeah but to people that are new it is yeah, it's absolutely. a lot they don't even know where to begin i think because they have um they have the resources to access to so much there's too information much information and mm -hmm. all that science and yeah the reason why one thing could be done five different ways that they get so caught up in that science that yeah. they can't even approach it. Right, so and I've said just this. just approach it. And if that approach doesn't work, there's probably another avenue. There's probably another way to do something. But, you know, don't get so caught up in the 
the should have, the would have, the if this, then that, then, you know, all these different reasons to execute something when you need to just apply one item, stick to that one item, write it out, and let it see how it works for you. And give it enough what time. Works for you might yeah. not work for someone else. Yeah, with time. Exactly. And then, you know, there's, you know, that road is always being paved by the pace of your own path, and it's allowed to change, it's allowed to circle around and, you know, take whatever direction it needs to to find that approach that works for you. But I think because so many people have access to, you know, on Instagram, on whatever social media they see on YouTube, there's so much information and it's overwhelming, especially for new people who might not even know how to apply any of it. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you have your approach and you have all these methods. Just, I suggest, you know, finding one item that seems most sustainable and realistic for that person, Mm -hmm. having that one plan of action and then, you know, following that plan with time, being patient with that plan, and then if it doesn't work, you find another route. It's no big deal. Yeah, that could be a little bit nebulous too, saying give it enough time. So if we're looking at how much time is needed, you could ask anybody, they're gonna give you a different answer. Yeah. yeah. If you have somebody that's watching over you, we're gonna know because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we do. That's right. what we're here for, that's yeah. our job. Yeah, someone's time could be three weeks when, exactly. you know, it, could, it should be like three to six months. Yeah, exactly. Because if you tie back a little bit into goal setting and having a structure, both of them together, that's going to lead you to the time period yep. that you have to look at for whether or not you make a change. Yep. If you already have goals set and it's realistic and unrealistic to know where you have to be, the tangible things that need to happen between A and B, B and C, C and D, all the way down to where you need to go, you're gonna know by a certain period of time is every goal that I'm looking at across the way that I need to achieve to get there, is that happening, yes or no? Mm-hmm. Am I hitting all of the targets that I need to for the structure that I've made to be successful in the parameters itself? Am I hitting the boxes, yes or no? If you are, you know that that structure is being done. Is the structure leading you to the goal or not? Yeah. If it's not, you have a certain period of time that that's been happening. Those time goals aren't being hit. You know you have to pivot. Yeah. And that's it. That's as simple and as complex as it needs to be. Yeah. You just need to have the prerequisite steps laid out and to know this is what needs to be done when. I think the you can sum it up like this. I think the best, like the reason Matt's so good and the other you know coaches that are really good coaches. Like, you know the science, but you know you know what really matters and what doesn't. So you can cut through the bullshit. Yeah. And you're and, and you're not wasting people aren't wasting time. Right. It's important to with this over this information overload for a coach, the, the ones that can sort through the you know, go through the what is it, cut through the weeds or whatever that saying is. Whatever it is. We're just knowing what matters and what doesn't, because people spend so much time worrying about stuff that doesn't matter. Ultimately. 